Welcome to Conversations. Thanks for tuning us in here on North Metro TV. I'm Eric Nelson, and today we're going to talk about a very sad and serious topic that is really an epidemic, not only in the North Metro, but across the entire U.S., and it's suicide, and mm -hmm. specifically teen suicide. And joining us right now is Katie Shatusky, who's from Thumbs Up Mental Health in Elk River and Katie first and foremost thanks for stopping by yeah thank you so much for having me I appreciate it yeah and I know your group thumbs up tries to do a lot to get ahead of mm -hmm. potential tragedy mm -hmm. tell us what the focus is yeah we um, so we've been around since about 2014 um, and we all kind of just started off as a 5k memorial run um, as I lost my grandfather to suicide um, and so for us, you know, we're just trying to do everything we can on the front end to prevent suicides um, and also be there for families who have lost a loved one to suicide. Um, so our mission really is to help as many people, young and old, as we possibly can. And it's been said, you know, permanent solution to a temporary problem. But mm -hmm. once it's done, it's done. Mm -hmm. And the impact is, uh, it, it's really, it, it lasts forever, doesn't it, on those who are the survivors? Yeah. yeah. I just heard an interesting topic the other day about um, suicide and the ripple effects of when somebody dies by suicide that it can impact up to 176 people and that's just an average number. Um, so yeah, unfortunately I think because people um, have a hard time talking about it um, and the stigma of mental health and suicide is hard to talk about unless you've experienced it personally or been affected by it personally. Um, you know, it's really challenging to go and get help and to talk about it. And I know like for my grandfather's side of things, generationally speaking, like it wasn't talked about. And in fact, my grandfather actually lost one of his brothers to suicide as well. So I think it's really just trying to do as much as we can to continue the conversation and to be vulnerable about it too and share like I have depression and I struggle and making it okay to talk about so people feel like they can go get the help that they need. So is that step one? getting things out in the open, being able to talk. I know especially for mm -hmm. males, that yeah. tends to be an issue. Absolutely. Is that the first step you take in this process? Yeah, I mean, I think anytime you're struggling, like know that it's okay to reach out. It's okay to not be okay. That's something I really like to talk about. And I personally struggle, so I have like the empathy side of things. I understand what it's like to be depressed. Um, but so find somebody that you can trust, find that safe person, whether it's a friend, a family member, a doctor, um, going to a therapist, like just know that it's okay and you're not alone. You went through it with your grandfather. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing you can remember that exact moment in time mm -hmm. and that gut punch you mm -hmm. went through. Mm -hmm. What was that like? Um, yeah, I mean, it's definitely a day I'll never forget. Um, I was actually on my way to work and I lived close to my grandma and grandpa's house and so I got to work and my husband um, called me and said, you know, I just passed your grandma and grandpa's and there's, there's police and ambulance there and do you want me to stop and see what's going on? So we hung up and he called me back shortly after and told me that my grandfather had passed away and told me how and um, I was very shocked. I knew my grandfather struggled but it wasn't something like our family openly talked about. Um, but you just never think it's actually going to be your family member, you know? So from, from that set of things, like it was definitely like a sucker punch. Um, I knew he struggled, but again, you just never think that's actually going to happen. And then, you know, having to, you know, tell my mom, cause I found out about it obviously pretty soon after it had happened and going to pick her up and stuff from work. And yeah, I mean, it's, it's a tragedy. Um, it's, I feel like you kind of grieve the loss of somebody to suicide like you would, um, like a murder. It's very much, you have so many unanswered questions and you feel like, I mean, at least we did almost 13 years ago. You just, people aren't reaching out because they don't know what to say right. and what not to say. And so, yeah, it's uh, definitely changed my life forever. And, and of course, the residual effects are lingering questions. You, mm -hmm. you never get resolution. You mm -hmm. never get the answers. That, okay, it's a tragedy if somebody dies in a car crash yeah. or somebody gets cancer and eventually they succumb to that, but you know at least why. Mm. You never know with suicide, do you? Mm -hmm. I mean, unless they leave a note. Um, my grandfather didn't. Um, and, you know, it's definitely something we've all kind of grappled with, but we just try to focus on, you know, it's hard to say the positives, but I think that's what we've been trying to do with Thumbs Up is really bring a positive light to a dark topic and really trying to figure out ways that we can um, 
make it something, that, again, that we can talk about and that we can share openly about it. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of, you know, we, looking back, it's like we saw some signs, but, you know, we don't have exact answers of why or, you know, what was going on in his head. Talk about the warning signs, because mm -hmm. there are a lot of people who cry wolf, mm -hmm. and they say they're going to do something, mm -hmm. they don't carry it out. Mm -hmm. Others do, we dismiss it, especially if it's done repeatedly, mm -hmm. and then bingo, presto, mm -hmm. they're gone. Mm -hmm. Did you see warning signs that you look back and say, well, I wish we would have maybe done something different to address that and take it more seriously? Yeah, I, there were definitely warning signs um, for my grandfather, and again, though, that isn't the case for everybody. And I will just say, too, like, um, you know, people who talk about suicide or who are suicidal or have suicidal ideation, if they've talked about it, I think sometimes people think that, oh, they're just like asking for attention. But I think there's a different way to look at that as more of a cry for help. So if somebody says that to you, I would take it very seriously and um, definitely look at, you know, being there for them, don't leave them, make sure that they have the support that they need. And sometimes that looks like calling 988 or calling 911 and bringing them into an ER. Um, but yeah, for my grandpa, he definitely had, he was making plans, so he, he died in November, so he was making plans for the spring ahead. So reaching out to us, asking, you know, helping get his boat in the water, you know, and we're like, oh, okay, but yeah, maybe he just needs, you know, extra help because he's aging. Um, you know, will you come over and make sure that the, the snow is shoveled if needed? Just things like that. Um, I know other people give away their personal belongings. Um, people will say their goodbyes. Um, they'll start calling people and, you know, having last conversations, um, giving away clothes, giving away things of, that mean a lot to them. Um, and, you know, for some other people, though, sadly, they don't, they don't give any warning signs. And, you know, that's probably even harder. In some cases, I've heard people say, well, they seem fine. Right. You know, for two, three, four months, it was normal. It was business as usual. Mm -hmm. But somebody once told me that when the person makes that decision that they're going to go away permanently, that, that let's say they want to go away, commit suicide mm -hmm. in July, mm -hmm. and they make that decision in April, there's a weight lifted off their back yeah. because they see the end of the road. Yeah. Now, we may not... You know, be, you know, we may not be able to wrap our arms around that, but that's why they seem normal up until the end because they think they're going somewhere better. Have you heard that theory? I have heard that theory, and I do think there is some truth to that. I think most people, um, they don't make their decision months in advance. That is the case for some people, but I think most people have a split-second decision. You know, maybe something traumatic happens, or maybe they just... But I have heard, like, you're not at your lowest low when you actually decide to take your life. Um, Again, every, every situation is a little bit different, but yeah, I have heard that theory before. And, and unfortunately, there's a lot of ways to do this. Mm -hmm. Over a thousand people have jumped off the Golden Gate Bridge mm -hmm. in San Francisco. There's pills, mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's locking yourself in the garage and leaving the car running. But, but guns mm -hmm. seem to be the easiest access. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, that's a problem, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I don't know. I try not to focus on like the how, you know, like I think that's really personal for each person and, you know, I, I don't know definitely the reasoning why they choose what they choose. Um, but just kind of, you know, continuing to spread that light, bright message of there's help and there's hope and, um, you know, we all have to do a better job of talking about it so that we can avoid um, losing our loved ones this way. Uh, we see this a lot with uh, younger people, mm -hmm. you know. Teenage suicide mm -hmm. is an epidemic. Um, tell us about that bullying, the rise of social media. Mm -hmm. You know what kind of you know factors have those things done to increase teen suicide? Yeah, I think the pandemic has had a huge um, impact and a lasting impact. Like we're still feeling the effects of that. I know even personally, I have a 17, almost 18 year old daughter and she still is really struggling. I feel like she's almost stuck where she was when the pandemic happened, if that makes sense. Um, and kind of the things we're seeing at Thumbs Up in our after school, pro um, after school program with middle school students is a lot of the bullying that, you know, typically like in our generations, you know, the, where that stuff happened at school, it's coming home with them and they're never able to shut that off. Um, yeah, it's, it's definitely a problem. The social media is a problem. 
I wish that schools didn't allow the phones in the school. Right. Um, I think it's so distracting. And then you have the other, you know, social media channels that, you know, obviously there's really good things that can come from social media, but I think, you know, the algorithms that are being fed to our kids where they're just scrolling and scrolling and scrolling hours endlessly, and the messaging that they're hearing that's being put right in front of them, um, it's alarming and I think we as parents and community members need to do a better job too of educating ourselves about the risks of social media, TikTok and Snapchat and there's a lot of things within those apps that are you know, hidden and private and makes it easier for kids to hide things. Um, but I mean, we have kids coming into Thumbs Up almost daily talking about their struggles at school, um, you know, that their friends are suicidal, that their friends are cutting. Um, and so it's, it's definitely, it, it's a huge, huge issue. And I, I just hope that if, if nothing else good came from, from the pandemic, that it's people realize for the first time that, you know what, mental health is serious and we, we need to do something about it. Solutions. What, what does uh, Thumbs Up try to do to, you know, to, to get ahead of this and combat mm -hmm. it? Yeah, we have nine different programs that Thumbs Up, everything from cheer bags, um, we have a referral assistance program that can help people pay for counseling. Our after school program really is a safe place for kids to come and hang out after school, do their homework, play games. Um, we bring in like a therapy dog. We have an art therapist that comes in. So it's really meant for kids who are just looking for that in between school and dinner time, like that safe hangout space. Um, we also have an emotional support dog program where we pair people with mental health disorders, a dog that can be there for them. Um, the list kind of goes on and on, but I think at the end of the day, like we're not just talking about mental health. While that is also important, we are boots on the ground trying to do what we can to help, even if it's just one student at a time. Um, our after school program has had over 1,100 youth visits since we opened about a year ago. So I, I just feel like that in itself, that program didn't even exist prior to us having our space. And, you know, that number, 1,100 students, like that's how many times we've been able to reach a student. Um, in the last year, and if that doesn't shine a bright light on the crisis, I don't know what does. And certainly in school there are cliques, mm -hmm. you know, there are the popular people, the others who are maybe more reclusive. Mm -hmm. Is the message to all kids, just be kind? Is it, is it that simple? Yeah, I'll let Shannon talk on that because she loves talking about that. Um, I mean, that's what it should be, but I don't know, kids are just mean. I don't know yeah. how else to put it. Like, I've watched it with both of my kids. I have a 17-year-old and a 10-year-old, and they've both struggled with bullies, you know, in their time at school. I don't really understand it. I think, again, though, the social media, it's so much easier to do that behind a screen. It's so much easier to say, oh, you look dumb, or you're fat, don't eat. Like, saying those things behind a screen is so much easier than saying that to somebody you know, face to face. So again, it's teaching our kids, like, be nice. And the things that you say, and I know Shannon will talk about this, but the things that you say, like yeah. people really do take those things to heart. And I mean, it can really impact somebody in a, a deep way. I don't know. Uh, before we wrap it up, tell us again about the, the 10K. It's a, yeah. a run, walk, bike event in Elk River, September 16th, it's part of Thumbs Up, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, so it's our 10th annual um, event, so we're kind of super excited about that um, being our 10 year. Uh, we never really thought we'd still be around after 10 years, if I'm being honest, it was supposed to be kind of a one-time event, and here we are 10, 10 years later. But yeah, it's a very family-friendly um, 5K, 10K run, walk, bike event. Um, we have a kids obstacle course and all sorts of fun things like crazy hair and face painting and all the fun things. We also have mental health vendors that come to that event and um, try to make it as, as fun as possible. So, If any of our viewers out there watching are going through some things, they're mm -hmm. struggling, how can they get a hold of Thumbs Up? Yeah, they can go to our website, thumbsupformentalhealth.org, um, and on there too is a list of resources. So if they're looking for a local resource, they can um, reach out to us or um, check out our website. Katie, thanks for stopping by. Thank you so much right. for having me. Uh, Katie Shatesky from uh, Thumbs Up Mental Health. We'll have more here on Conversations. We're going to talk with uh, a couple of moms who unfortunately lost their kids because of suicide. Stick around. This is North Metro TV. I don't know why you're so sad. You've got a roof over your head. Bro, you gotta stop with that depression stuff. 
That's a white people thing. Escúchame, en esta casa los hombres no lloran. You all right? It just feels like it's coming from everywhere. Do you want to talk about it? Thanks for hearing me out, bro. Appreciate it. You can talk to me if you're feeling sad. Whenever you need to talk, I'm here, okay? Welcome back to Conversations here on North Metro TV as we continue to talk about uh, coping with one of the ultimate tragedies in life, and that would be a suicide. And joining us now here in studio are a couple of moms who have been thrust together for all the wrong reasons because of a tragic situation, but now you're trying to get out in front of this and do some good. We have Janet Casperson and Shannon Lee here, both of you lost kids because of suicide. Uh, Janet, I know your son Sam was dating her daughter Ashley and within just a few months it's in Ashlyn. 2020 they both committed suicide. Let, let's start with just saying thanks for coming down and sharing your story. Absolutely. Um, so you didn't know each other when Sam and Ashlyn were nope. dating did you? Nope, nope, we did not. Nope. And Maybe now in you're passing when dropping our kids off at yeah. each other's houses, you know, mm -hmm. but that's mm -hmm. about it. And, and now you're uh, airtight, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Inseparable. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. we're, we're a team for life. Mm -hmm. so, so what are you trying to do here? You've had to somehow navigate your way through incredibly choppy waters that you never thought you'd be going through. What are you doing here now to get this out in the front and get it out in the open? We just, uh, our, I guess our mission is we, like you said, we've gone through the absolute unimaginable and our mission in life after our kids have died is just to keep talking about it i feel like we just need to keep talking about mental health and make sure it's okay for these kids to know it's okay to not be okay it's okay to not have a great day but to keep moving forward mm -hmm. yep yeah i mean that's kind of that's kind of the thing we put most of our efforts in towards is um you know, we try to help at schools, kind of give our message and share some of that. And, um, and kind of share like what our lives are like now mm -hmm. without our kids. Like we've, you know, spoken at high schools before and talking to those kids and sharing our stories and what our lives now entail because of the loss of our kids. Mm -hmm. Just their, their faces were like devastated, you know, like especially when our kids were supposed to be graduating high school, going to prom. Our kids didn't have the opportunity to do that. Mm -hmm. So we instead are bringing flowers out to the cemetery, like corsages and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Like this is for a kid, you know, they don't, they never got to, to go through those fun things mm -hmm. and graduation yeah. and mm -hmm. yeah. Janet, take us back to that incredibly tragic moment in time. January 2nd, 2020. So we're just into a new decade. It's right after New Year's. Usually people are in a good mood and then you find out your son Sam is gone. Uh, what was that like? It was the most horrific day of my life. I was just, you know, at home and um, I, I knew he was struggling a bit after the loss of his two good friends to suicide four months prior. Because prior to that time frame, he never really, he never had issues uh, with depression or anything like that and I think or if he did it wasn't very noticeable until after the loss of his two friends and then he kind of spiraled after that and so um, that day January 2nd was literally the worst day of my life I'll you know mm. I'll never forget it falling to my knees screaming uh, running over to his dad's house you know getting the phone call you know it was it was the worst day of my life mm -hmm. me too because my daughter Sam, got the phone yeah. call, mm -hmm. too. And Ashlyn and Sam were dating. Mm -hmm. So then you fast forward to February 17th, three days after Valentine's Day, just six weeks later, you lose Ashlyn. Yeah, so, well, I mean, backing up to Sam, though, I mean, 
getting that phone call about Sam because Sam's sister was messaging Ashlyn. So we were kind of hearing things right away. So we drove to their house immediately and I maybe maybe even got there before got there even Janet before did. did. And that's how social um, media works. Yeah, that's how social media works. And um, yeah, it was just just awful. And so Ashlyn obviously struggled quite a bit from that point forward. I mean, Sam had told Ashlyn that he was struggling and you know she she really felt a lot of responsibility for not being able to save him and um, other people kind of made her feel she should have done more too and they weren't so kind to her through social media in fact they told her she should also go kill herself wow. and six weeks later then on February 18th she then died to suicide as well so you saw some warning signs I know you told me before the interview that you mm -hmm. were trying to get ahead of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you look back and say, woulda, coulda, shoulda, either of you? Mm. That is such a tough question because yeah. I, I did at first, absolutely. But you know it's not going to bring them back. No, we don't live in that I space. Can't. We can't yep. live in that space. Yep. I, it, you'll, go, you'll drive yourself crazy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he's gone. He's not coming back. And so I just have to put my mind at peace that you know I can't I can't keep questioning myself we did the best we could mm -hmm. with what we knew at the time mm -hmm. but now here we are mm -hmm. so what can we do now right. so this is this is the place mm -hmm. we're in now so this is why we are get are so fiercely you yeah. know want to tell our story. motivated to mm -hmm. to keep talking and to keep doing as much good as we can you know moving forward yeah, and there's no roadmap for dealing with suicide and the domino mm -hmm. effects you know, spread out. There's tentacles, as you know. Mm -hmm. But you're getting out ahead of it. You're trying to be proactive mm -hmm. and take this uh, horrible situation and, and turn it into some sort of a positive. Mm -hmm. uh, wh what have you learned? What have you been able to convey to people? Do you feel like maybe you've helped some people? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, for sure. we've, we've heard it before. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. we've heard people say, you know, you know, even when we were, especially when we were at that the high school speaking, we had a young girl come up to us and said, you saved my life today. Mm -hmm. You know, I was contemplating and I see what you two have gone through and what I would put my family through and I can't do that to my family. But we tell our story and mm -hmm. we tell it kind of, I mean, we, we tell the truth and we, it might sound harsh and hard to hear sometimes, but with that message is also a message of hope and resilience mm -hmm. and like life is hard and it's hard for our kids especially what they're going through and what they deal with in the world today is unlike what anyone else has ever had to deal with it it's hard but you know us being able to talk to them and let them know it's hard it's going to be hard but you have to choose the path you know you're going to take and choose to keep walking and keep moving forward and really thinking about like Katie said I mean kindness like we have to be better, we have to do better, we have to be better people, we have to be kinder to each other. I mean, your words, what you say to people can really make such a profound impact. And you can choose them for good or bad, but you know, when you say those words, do you want to be the one who puts someone over the edge by what you just said? Like really think, do you need to say that comment as you're passing someone in the hall? And that sort of thing. So we really try to, you know, give them some perspective, but also that piece of hope that you know, it's, it's okay, it's going to be hard, it is hard, but you can get through. We've gotten through this, lots of people have gotten through so many hard things and we can do this, but we have to just keep making that choice to keep moving forward and asking for help, you know, when you need help. Right. So, right. you know, that, that we're real passionate about is just kind of trying to connect with those younger people, but also talking about social media and the place that is in the world in our lives today because that's not going away but we certainly aren't living in that space in a real healthy way so how do we get better at that yeah and, and social media has this gigantic global footprint mm -hmm. and there are a lot of positives but as you right. said, right. yes. there's a lot of things it's like yes. the wild west it's unharmed yep. <laughs> so we use that i use that term all the time <laughs> yeah it's, it's, and school is like the wild mm -hmm. west right. i mean mm -hmm. teachers can only control so much mm -hmm. and the phones are in the way and they're causing problems and but they're i mean they're good too so mm -hmm. we have to learn to live better in that digital world right. i mean our mental well-being is important our physical well-being is important and our Digital well-being is important. Those three things really are so important in just being a well-rounded, you know, person. 
do you feel like, I mean, we're in such a polarized nation right now. And so these kids see it at the top mm -hmm. from the growing ups. Mm -hmm. do, do you feel like that division that we are seeing in everyday life trickles down into the high schools and oh, sure. that, that kids are almost saying, hey, look, they're being mean to so, so and so on television. I can do the same thing at oh, high school mm -hmm. or oh, Spring Lake Park. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I see adults bullying each other all the time mm -hmm. also on social media. It's not just kids, you know. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that's where they're learning it from. I don't, I don't know. But and I, like you know, he said, it's just so quick to just type something up on the screen real quick, send it, mm -hmm. and what could he have possibly done? You know, like it doesn't, it doesn't What's need to. What's the point? Yeah. The why, point. why did yeah. you need to say that? So quick, someone just whoop, type yeah. something, off it goes, and then right. they're off to dinner right. or whatever. They don't even think twice that that comment literally could be like so detrimental to what what happens to that person reading it on the on the other end. Right. So, and then um, there's apps that even, you know, make it anonymous, like through Snapchat, mm -hmm. where you can bully people and say terrible things to people through these anonymous mm -hmm. third party apps that run throughout Snapchat, which is something that we've have uh, worked on in the past to help get those off of Snapchat. So we so we try to work on you know, people will reach out with different bills they're trying to pass legislation and yeah. stuff like that. And like Katie had mentioned, some of those things, running those algorithms against our youth, like feeding them things that really they shouldn't, shouldn't be fed. I mean, they can maybe find those things on their own, but we shouldn't be giving it to them. We shouldn't be handing it over to them, telling them how they can do, you know, right, and what they should terrible be things. And, yes. And, yeah. mm -hmm. yes. As parents, I'm sure you try to convey the message of, you know, being kind and, you know, mm -hmm. not bullying and mm -hmm. things like that. You go to a high school like Blaine, it's, it's a mini university. There's mm -hmm. over 3,000 right. right. kids mm -hmm. there, right? So they have a tough job. What yeah. would be your advice to Blaine High School, Spring Lake Park, or anyone else out there in faculty to help them get ahead of this and maybe uh, prevent similar tragedies? I mean, it's little steps. It's baby steps. It's all the little things that we've tried to do since our kids died. As we, you know, when we met Katie, the things that Thumbs Up can offer, the resources, the um, just little things like the rubber, you know, wristbands that say you are enough or whatever it might be, keep moving forward, or the, you know, vinyl stickers they put on their water bottles. Small messages, just things around that can be, you know, tools for kids to like look at that and go, okay, yep, I'm, it, you know, this sticker on my water bottle I stuck on that says it's okay to not be okay. You know, Thumbs Up offers those things. And so that's what we really just keep trying to push is getting more just visibility, more talking about it, and just more things available to, to just make, I don't know, it, it more open and, I don't know, like better, better for them. I mean, we, we just have to keep talking about it, and all those things open those doors, you know. So, so you try to live in a positive space, look forward, not in the rearview mirror. Do you ever, though, on occasion get angry and say, my goodness, Sam, or my goodness, Ashlyn, how, why? I've never been, I've personally never been angry. I mean, Ashlyn left behind some really beautiful notes that really help, helped me okay. to understand what her headspace was, you know, when she, when she left. And for me, that's comforting that everybody has that. Yeah. Um, but I've never been angry. And again, I think they did the best they could mm -hmm. until they couldn't. And, you know. Yeah. I didn't get anything with Sam. I didn't get a single thing. So that was really tough for me. No, and like goodbye notes or anything. Right. Nothing. Mm -hmm. So did I get angry? Yeah, I did. At, right after. I'm going to get <laughs> <laughs> But um, I did shortly after. But how much does <laughs> sadness, a lot of sadness. No. Do you ever wonder how you two got here? I, I mean, did, was, this, <laughs> was this meant to be manifest destiny? I mean, in the most horrific of ways, you're, you're together trying to, you know, make something good out of, you know, something mm -hmm. that was just terrible. Mm -hmm. You know, I think we always say this, that this is our therapy. Sure. You know, we, you know. We are sad every single day. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, at some point every day, like yeah. we 
we cry. We cry. Like something, Here it is. <laughs> yep, here's her turn. Sometimes it's me, sometimes it's a song, sometimes yeah. it's a you know memory mm -hmm. or something you're going to do that they're not gonna be a part of. Mm -hmm. um, so it's with us every single day and yes. it will be forever. Um, and I, yeah, I think just, yeah, the loss of our kids and what we've gone through, it just pushes us that much harder to try to create something better, you know, for the future, for our kids that are, you know, in elementary and middle school, you know, because like Shanna said, it, the world's not going to get any easier, you know, it's going to be getting harder, if anything, you know, and trying to figure out a way now to, you know, make things better for the future. And, and things that our kids maybe didn't have. I mean, after Sam's friends died, he didn't really have help. Like, I mean, he's a 16 year old mm -hmm. kid who just lost his two good friends. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of like, well, yep, that happened. Yes, Everyone yes, get yeah. back to, you know, we have, you have school, get back to school. And there wasn't a lot of just, I, I don't, for him, like ways to deal with that. Right, you there, know? there really isn't a, a lot. Uh, in our schools, you know, for mental health wise, you know, like they have one school psychologist in a school of like 3,600 kids. Otherwise they have their school counselors that are not specifically mentally health trained. They're, help, they're there to help you pick out your classes or for the future, that type of thing, but they're not mentally health trained. So here you have two kids that died within two weeks of each other at the high school and these kids are struggling big time. Mm -hmm. And they weren't, I felt like they weren't, and I got this from a lot of the kids, letting the kids grieve to the extent they needed to. They went through a lot in two weeks. Um, and then Sam died. And then, and then Sam died four and months then, later. And then we started getting just like kids were messaging mm -hmm. us like, we, we, need, scared. we need help. Mm -hmm. We don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. You can't get into any mental health you know, professional for a long period mm -hmm. of time. They can't get in at school to talk mm -hmm. to somebody necessarily, and they're like, struggling mm -hmm. and we're like well we're no experts in <laughs> mental health we say that right, all the time right. but I mean we've become I mean we both yeah. have done mental health first aid right. course now and we've at least tried to be a little bit more mm -hmm. you know educated and stuff and since the 988 number went live um, that's a huge okay. huge thing yeah. to be able to refer people mm -hmm. to so that message alone sharing that with our kids like you can text that number you could message and you're concerned about yourself, mm -hmm. somebody else, there's somebody there who can, can help you figure right. out what to do. And it's the crisis, it's a crisis yeah. number, yeah. Yep, yep. And so, yeah, I mean, since, since our kids died and since we've then kind of, you know, really became such good friends with Katie, there's been other suicides in our districts. And so immediately we start getting messages when, when those things happen, like we just get bombarded. Mm -hmm. Um, we've had to like leave work because we're just overloaded. People are like just blowing up our phones mm -hmm. and um, you know we've been able to then bring resources to the schools that's that thumbs up offers and I mean it's free it's free resources but it's it's those things that it's something that that the kids can hold on to and like look at and read and find something in that could possibly help right. them so there's there's you know, they have some more of those coping skills available to them. So we've done that multiple times. And that's what we want to keep doing is just making things available. And, um, you know, as, as Katie had mentioned, um, you know, moving now into our area, that's really, it's gonna be huge that's for really been the that's whole, yeah. struggled so badly. It's going to be huge yeah. for our community. So we're so excited for any, that. Any, uh, any advice, any tips? To parents who might be watching or kids that uh, you want you want to share um, I mean you know sometimes it's hard because like I've said we can do all the right things as parents like in our own home and in our the walls of our own space we can love our kids and do all the right things but we send them out into the world we send them to school and it's like it it wrecks them so I mean just be nice people <laughs> you know I mean yeah. You, you gotta just, you don't know what other people are going through and, you know, just having compassion and empathy for people and again, yeah. that 988 number, if you yeah. are concerned about anything your child is doing, whether you notice they're cutting or whatever, I mean, message, I mean, see, see what, what kind of help you can find.
I think my advice for parents would be just to really, to really listen to your kids. Um, I think in this you know world we're just so caught up and busy and sometimes don't really fully listen to your kids and what seems what might not seem that tragic or important to you is devastating in their lives mm -hmm. and so I think that's very important to actually really listen to them yeah and, and finally I'll wind up with this if somebody's crying wolf repeatedly do you need to take it seriously every time? I'd call 911 every single 100%. time. Mm -hmm. And eventually they'll stop crying wolf and they'll get the help they need. Mm -hmm. But every single mm -hmm. time, take call 911. Mm -hmm. So that's a huge red flag. That there mm -hmm. is something going mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. And if, and they if, have that thought in their mind. And if they and don't yeah. and they're just doing that for attention, they'll stop when you keep calling 911. <laughs> We've been down that road before. All right. Well, uh, kudos to both of you for doing what you do and you know rising up from the ashes so to speak and we wish you nothing but the best yeah thanks. thank you all right mm -hmm. janet casperson shannon lee uh here on conversations on north metro tv